Well, it's about goddamn time, isn't it, guys? It's been a month. It's been a month, and the reason mainly that I haven't made a parkour map project video in such a long time is because Zombies mod has not been updated for, uh, I don't know, there was, there was a problem that I had during installation, and um, the last time it was updated was the 10th of August, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, enough of that. So, I'm actually facing this way now because I haven't done work on Paragon in a while, but I've done work on something in this direction. What have I done? I've done this! Over here, this is the military training camp, which actually brings me to this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure if this map is actually going to be peaceful with mobs or not. I, I think it's going to end up being peaceful because I don't think... I think the only way to die in this map is going to be from Paragon and maybe the lighthouse if you fall. Um, but I think I want to keep it mob free, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I think I'm going to get rid of it. Um, but I've started working on the book, uh, which is the yeah. This is the first parkour map project video I've done in 1.3. So I've added the book, and I've started writing it already. Now I'm going to have three books, maybe more. Uh, I haven't. All right, let me let me let me think about what I'm saying first. I'm going to have a few books. Now, the first that you get is going to be the beginner book. That's what you start with. And then, when you complete a certain challenge, uh, you will get the intermediate book. And then you can complete those challenges. Um, now, the intermediate book is, I think, going to be completed at the end of the military training. So, uh, I was thinking about putting it at the top of the lighthouse, but I might put something else up there. Um... But the military training arena camp thing, whatever the fuck, that I think is going to be the, uh, it's going to reward the second book. I think that's a good way for people to actually learn how to do parkour, especially if they've never done it before, um, and to know what they're in for. Now, since 1.3 has come out, I haven't touched the notice board. Uh, since 1.3 has come out, I've done some things, the first of which, changed this to, uh, dark, dark, that was weird. I don't know what the fuck my voice did then, anyway. Dark wood, uh, half slabs and everything like that. Across here, the stairs. Uh, did a little bit of tweaking along here. That's changed. Not a huge change, but um, I've added this with the lights. Now, I'm currently set to day only, so it's always going to be daytime unless I choose otherwise. Um, I have recessed this into the floor a little bit to be half slabs rather than the original uh, full blocks. So now this kind of recesses in. Um, my nose is fucking up. What the fuck are you doing? And, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it for this. I'm not sure when 1.4 comes. I think I might change this to corner stairs if I figure out how that works, if that even gets implemented. Apparently, it's not uh, set in stone, one would say. Um, but, yes, I went through and just added some uh, half slabs and stairs here and there for different wood types, uh, especially more notably on the boat, uh, the bridges, and the pier itself. So, there you go. That's pretty much it. I haven't done anything on Paragon. Uh, I think last time I was replicating that design on the other side. Uh, nothing with the towers just yet. I was going to do the city and then I thought, no, no, I'm going to do the, what's it called? Military camp thing first. Um, so I, I continued this pathway up here to a T intersection. So this was the original and it goes up here to the logic puzzle. And at the same time, it comes this way, which is a path that just goes around here. Um, I have yet to actually work on this path. I just wanted to get it up, up and running. It's hollow at the moment, uh, except for this little shortcut through here, which I might implement something into this. Um, right now, it's just a shortcut. And it comes out on this side, just a little design. I'm not... I don't know how I feel about that. I spent like an hour just trying all these different designs for this, for this building and... Just everything look like a total mess. I mean, this is semi-decent, but I just... I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, ignoring that, this is the military camp, what I've done so far. Uh, I'm going to have a book in here that explains the difficulty system and everything like this. So this is kind of like a mini-game within the map itself. Um, now, I, I figure I might as well explain the difficulty system as it is. Now, each jump, this is going to teach you most of the jumps that you're going to encounter in the map. Um, the difficulty here is written as, it's out of 10, first of all, and it's either the first number, which is 
walking difficulty and the second one is sprinting difficulty. So for example, the difficulty of this jump is about a 1 out of 10. You can fail it if you're retarded. So just come back up here. And, but it's, it's very difficult to fail it because it's such a simple jump. Now, if you're sprinting, it's even easier. So, 0.5. There is literally no way to fail this jump if you're sprinting unless you just like, uh, just forget to hit the space bar or something. Um, but yeah, that's how that works. So following that, it's, it's kind of going with a typical obstacle design, obstacle course design type thing. Uh, the difficulty of the second jump, this is two blocks, so it's going very simple. I've got one block jump, two block jump, three block jump, and a four block jump. I have yet to add the corner here, and I'm going to continue it this way. It's going to be kind of like a loop uh, circuit track type thing, and I'll try and put all the jumps into it that I can. Uh, this is the second jump, obviously. 1.5 out of 10, so for walking, wow, uh, I hit space, but I just timed it wrong, so don't, just ignore that, that didn't happen. Anyway, so you're coming across, and I should actually change the difficulty of that, because that is quite harder than, I'd say, 1.5 out of 10. Um, a two block jump without sprinting is actually more harder than it looks, more harder than it looks, I don't know. Anyway, the 1 out of 10 for sprinting is pretty accurate, though. I mean, it's it's pretty hard to fail it if you're sprinting. Um, same setup. If you fall, ladder in the corner to get back up. Um, so you make your way across, and then the difficulty, X, and then 4 out of 10. And X will mean that the jump is impossible, that you just simply cannot do it. So in this instance, if you were walking, I think I'm swallowing a lot. I'm sorry, I just had dinner, and I didn't have a drink yet. I haven't got a drink yet, so... That explains why I'm like... But anyways, so X means you cannot jump. Uh, you cannot make the jump. So, I mean, you can try all you want, but come on. It's just... I mean, maybe with the smart moving mod or whatever the fuck that is, which it will not be allowed in this map. God damn it, it will not be allowed because I'd prefer vanilla maps. That way everyone has a fair advantage or whatever the fuck. Um, it'd be pretty cool to see someone do it with... Um, Smart moving, because I, I don't know much about the smart moving mod. All I know is that... Anyway, I digress. I digress. No one gives a fuck. The X means you cannot make the jump, as I've just demonstrated. Uh, the 4 out of 10 means it's pretty difficult to make a 3-block jump with a sprint if you time it wrong. But if you time it right, you shouldn't really have any problems with it. So it's... Eh, I would say a 5 out of 10, but a 4 out of 10, it seems a bit on the easy side. Like, even if you stop sprinting in midair, it's, it's fairly simple to make. Um... Now, I haven't finished this yet. Obviously, this is just what I was doing. Um, this is a four-block jump. Haven't decided the difficulty for this one yet, but as you can see, even with uh, sprinting, it's quite difficult. Now, I'm going to have a hint at the end of this corner that tells you an easy way to make these jumps. If you look down with a reticle, and uh, ugh, and I still didn't make it. Fuck. God damn it. I will not, I will not complete this video without making this jump. Just... Ugh, God fucking damn it. Uh, you know what it is? It's the frame rate while recording. Um, it drops down to 30 when I look down for some reason. It's probably loading all the caves. Ha! Uh, there we go. So, you can time it quite easily if you do that, but I think it is po uh, It is possible to make it without looking straight down. It's just quite hard. So this might be, you know, an 8 out of 10 jump. Um, and of course an X for walking, because if you try to make this jump while walking... Even if I did jump, I wouldn't even get that close. So, yeah, that's that's what I've done so far for the obstacle course. Um, the design is fairly random. It's just like random windows here and there. Um, squids? Nos? Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to lay this out. Oh, and some Easter eggs. Now, I think in one of the earlier videos, in the... I believe it was this chest. Yes. Logic Puzzle 01 complete. Now, Ender Pearls. This is very difficult. Uh, I've thought about this quite a bit, and I figured that Ender Pearls will be given very, very rarely. Well, not rarely, but, you know, one per chest or something. So, you may choose to use Ender Pearls as you wish, um, or you may collect them for certain, certain tasks um, to help them, make them easier. Um, for the time being, I haven't really built anything in this main area, but for the adventurous player, I will reward them uh, if they so desire to 
albeit think outside the boundaries, then by all means, they should be re rewarded for their inquisitive nature. But that's pretty much it for what I've done so far. I think I'm going to build a little bit more of this and uh, see how it goes. So I think I'll be back in a second. I want to get this video up tonight uh, as, as of recording this, so there's no real way for you to know what night that is, but I will try and get a little bit more of this done before I see you again. And yeah, I might time lapse it actually. I'm going to time lapse it. All right, let's do this. So I decided that while this video plays, I thought I would tell you something about uh, myself and Minecraft parkour. Um, I wanted to talk about how I actually got into Minecraft parkour, because before, um, a thought crossed my mind, like you just get that urge, how sometimes you, you remember that you've seen a, a video a few years ago and you're like, hmm, I wonder what that video is doing now, and then you go back and check the video and see what it's like. Um, that's kind of like what I had with my first ever introduction to Minecraft parkour, which was by a guy called Tetrix1993. Um, now, the, the guy himself, Tetrix, wasn't the guy that got me into parkour. Uh, when I first got Minecraft in October of 2010, um, I started watching quite a few Let's Plays, you know, the typical uh, C Nanas, X, that kind of stuff, JX23, Husky Mudkips, all those guys, way back in the day. Um, well, relatively back in the day. Um, and there was this other guy that I watched called The Tolhi. I've mentioned him a few times in the past. Um, and he was a Canadian commentator, probably one of my favourite Minecraft Let's Plays ever. Um, and he did a custom map at one point, which was Tetrix's Obstacle Course. Um, and that was the first time I was introduced to Minecraft Parkour. And uh, he uploaded the first part of him, I'm like, I have got to try this. Like, I'd never even thought of it. It, it had never crossed my mind before that point to try parkour in Minecraft. I mean, I've tried parkour in real life, but, you know, not professional stuff, just like running around the backyard, over the neighbor's fence, that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, so I saw I saw that video, the first part of it, which I'll link in the description. Highly urge you to go check it out. It's an old video. It's about a year old, maybe more. Wait, of course more. Um, and that was the video that got me into Minecraft parkour. As soon as I watched it, as soon as I saw Tolly playing that map, I'm like, I I want to play this map. I want to do it. It looks legitimately fun, because I'd never seen something like that in Minecraft before. I'd just, you know, seen Surviving Your First Night and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so I wanted to give it a go. So I I downloaded the map, the, uh, the custom map. Obviously, it doesn't work anymore, because, you know, ladders back then were different. Uh, just a lot of stuff was different back then that you can't uh, do anymore. So the map is broken. Uh, if there is a download for it, don't bother, because it doesn't work. Um, but I, I tried that map, and before Tolly uploaded part 2, I wanted to beat the map. So, as to avoid spoilers, I was playing through it, and I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. Each uh, challenge got progressively more difficult, and it was just an awesome, fun map to play. And there was this one challenge that I explicitly remember called Challenge 15, and it, it was just... Uh, like, pulling nails, pulling teeth, just everything being pulled at the same time, which is kind of gross, but yeah, that's that's what it was like, it was just so much frustration and pain in one, oh look, three block, three block high, up, oh, jump, anyway, yeah, so, and it was just so much frustration in that, in that challenge, it was a library, and there were ladders on the wall, and you'd have to jump up on top of the ladders, and jump, and climb, and grab, and it was so insanely difficult, and, um, yeah, I, I managed to complete it in a few hours. That's how difficult it was at the time. And um, just the frustration was unreal, man. But you felt so good when you finished it. That's what I want parkour. Uh, that's what I want the parkour of Paragon pa Paragon Castle. Derp. That's what I want Paragon Castle to be like. Um, where it's so frustrating you want to give up. But when you do complete it, you will feel like a just a trillion dollars. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I finished the map. And uh, then I was ready for Tolhi's part two. So I watched his part two of it, and he had the same thing I did. It was just so frustrating for him. It took hours, at least from what I remember. And um, it was funny watching him do all the jumps, and I'm like, oh, oh this one sucks. Oh, oh he did it. Oh, oh this, is, this jump's a fucking kick in the dick, man. He's going to hate this one. And, um, yeah, so at one point he got to... 
he actually finished the challenge, he's like, yes, I've done it, I've done it, and then, you know, the next video he uploads or whatever, the one after that, or, like, around that time, he, he sets fire to the library and manages to do the challenge in one go. And at that point, I knew that you can learn things, especially parkour in Minecraft, if you do it, which is where the inspiration for this, uh, the military training has come from. If you do these jumps enough times, if you learn the mechanics, then the rest of the map will be easier. So, really, it's, it's your choice to do this or not. But if you do, you'll have an advantage over people that don't. And, you know, to watch Tolhi burn the library to the ground and all the while jump over it. Oh, wait, check this out. Check this out. Look how sick this is. Ready? One, two... Three! Oh, first go, motherfuckers. But that's what it was like. Watching Tolhi just burn the library down and make all those jumps, those insanely difficult jumps, was just the greatest thing in the world, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, that's how I got into Minecraft Parkour. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think it's a decent length. That's what she said. And I will see you next time.